And that's good. JSCPAO, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Discovery ISS for a voice check. Discovery ISS, this is JSCPAO. How do you hear me? Rob, your radio loud and clear. This is Gina Sinceri, ABC News for Commander Poindexter. It looks like you've got a packed house up there. But this week we're celebrating a lot of anniversaries, and I'm wondering if you would take a minute to reflect on the accomplishments of the space program and, and kind of your vision of where you would like to see things go in the future. Uh, Gina, thanks for the question. Uh, nice talking to you again today. On April 12th, we celebrated uh, two great anniversaries. The first was with our Russian partners and their anniversary of Yuri Gagarin's launch in 1961. And the second was, of course, the uh, anniversary of the first launch of the space shuttle on April 12th, 1981, with Captain John Young and Captain Bob Crippen aboard. I think it's a, a great way and a great time to reflect on all the accomplishments of both space programs as well as our international partnership together. As you can see, we have uh, three nations represented in this group of 13 astronauts and cosmonauts. And I, I think it's just great that we're up here on the International Space Station working together with joint research and joint technology programs and doing uh, wonderful work for all, all of humankind. This is Jill Tolk with Bay Area Houston Magazine. A question for Mikhail and Alexander. What have you enjoyed most about your mission so far, and what beautiful things have you seen through the cupola? Spasibo. Well, Cupola is a window to universe. It's very amazing. I was very impressed first time I seen space from Cupola. It's a very great view. And of course, uh, the first impression for me, it was our launch by uh, uh, Soyuz rocket. It, it was first launch for me and for Alexander. And nine minutes uh, for orbit, it was uh, like a new life for me. It was very impressive. Thank you. And I had a similar question for Alexander, what it was like for you to have your launch. What have you enjoyed and what things have you seen through Cupola? Thank you very much for your questions. It was exciting for me. and. Uh, I think uh, it was my first experience to be in space, and uh, Cupola, the same, it was exciting. Hi, this is Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com. Um, for Clay Anderson, uh, one of the themes of Apollo 13, uh, which occurred 40 years ago this week, was that the media and public had been mostly turned off to the mission until something went wrong. Uh, you and your crewmates have had your share of minor glitches on this flight, which have provided for some headlines here on Earth. But do you feel the public should be more aware of your mission when everything is going nominally? Well, I think, yes, they should. Uh, you know, what we do here is special. What we do here is difficult. And what we do here is a great example of what humans can do if they work hard, if they work smartly, and if they work together. So yeah, I'd really like to see everybody pay more attention when uh, we're up here, regardless of whether things are going well or whether they're going poorly. And a, a question for Dottie Metcalf Lindenberger. Um, Looking at the photographs when you attended space camp and thinking of the campers that have now followed you and are there now, uh, can you give a sense of how real space flight compares to what you thought it, was, it would be like at age 14? It certainly looks like you're having just as much fun. 
Well, uh, when I was at space camp, I uh, one of my simulations was to be in the lab, and uh, it was more of a space hub on a shuttle. But uh, I have actually had a chance to go throughout ISS and see the experiments that are going on. Um, our flight. We don't have time to participate in the experiments. That's what the ISS crew is for. But this is what I would have imagined as a 14-year-old that a space lab looked like. And uh, the shuttle ride was uh, very exciting, nothing that I could quite ever imagine. But I hope that all students out there, whether you're attending space camp or not, are um, interested in pursuing their passions. Discovery ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes questions from JSC. Please stand by for a voice check from KSC PAO. Discovery ISS, this is KSC PAO. How do you hear me? Radio loud and clear. Radio loud and clear. Marsha Dunn of the Associated Press. Um, probably for Commander Poindexter. I'm wondering if you have any plans or hopes of um, listening in real time to the presidential space policy speech that will be going on at Kennedy Space Center tomorrow afternoon. Um, you'll still be up. It'll be close to bedtime, but I didn't know if Mission Control was going to try to accommodate you. And, and do you feel a little removed being up there and, and missing um, all the uh, space goings on down here with the new policies being announced? Well, that's a good question. Uh, we're real busy, as you know, on orbit uh, with our transfer operations, and tomorrow is a big day where we put the MPLM back in the payload bay. We're keeping uh, abreast of all current news. Uh, the, the, the Mission Control Center uh, sends us news every day. Here on Space Station, they have a lot of assets that allow us to get uh, current news, so yeah, we're staying abreast of, uh, of uh, most of the, of the current news. and. Uh, as far as uh, as real time, uh, I, I don't have uh, don't know of any plans to tie us in for that at all. Thank you. And um, question for any or all of the four upside down women. You look upside down from this point of view, anyway. How is it um, having um, a crowd of four women in space all together at the same time? What does it say for woman power? Well, it's certainly a pleasure to uh, be part of a mission with uh, uh, two additional women or three total women on the shuttle and joining uh, uh, Tracy Caldwell on the space station for four women in space total. And it uh, really is a testament to uh, the hard work of uh, women. Uh, we've had uh, the, the benefit of the mentorship of many women in the astronaut office uh, now uh, reaching over f having 50 women in, f in space and uh, really is a testament to the hard work and accomplishments of women and we hope to inspire uh, young women to follow in our footsteps and to pursue their dreams. Ha have there been any advantages that you can see of having so many women on space for this flight? Well, uh, due to uh, discipline and background, we each bring a unique perspective and a different look perhaps at procedures or uh, at activities. And so we really just believe that we uh, bring an additional uh, aspect uh, to the mission. And uh, it's just nice to be able to share this experience actually with all of the crew members, both the shuttle and the space station. Thank you. And, and final question from here at the Kennedy Space Center for either Clay Anderson or, or Rick Mistracchio. Um, you had to struggle s so much with those bolts over the last three spacewalks. It, you, you must be pretty tuckered out. Um, how tiring was it? How tired are you today? And do you really need this day off? Well, it may have seemed like we're working hard, but actually as we were struggling with those bolts, we were just doing a lot more thinking than we were actually working. Uh, as we worked with Mission Control and the folks inside the space station with Dottie and the robotics folks to try to figure out a plan to get that tank in place. So it really physically wasn't too difficult. Um, and today, uh, Clay and I feel fine, and uh, if necessary, we'll go out for future spacewalks, but hopefully none of those will be required. And uh, we, we're enjoying our day off of Will after this, and we're looking forward to more work and returning home shortly. Discovery ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes questions from KSC. 
Please stand by for a voice check from NASA Headquarters, PAO. Discovery ISS, this is Headquarters, PAO. How do you hear me? Really loud and clear. Greetings to everyone and to uh, all of the members of uh, SDS-131. Congratulations on a flawless launch and a successful mission. It's Joe Matthew from Sirius XM Satellite Radio. Question for uh, Captain Poindexter. With, with only three missions left, I just wonder what your feelings are, what kind of emotions you're feeling uh, knowing that uh, this will be your final shuttle mission and the program is winding down. Thanks for your question. Uh I think all of us feel really, really lucky to be here. Uh, very honored and very proud to represent our, our countries. Uh, and I, I think it's just a lucky, lucky experience that I wish more people could have. Um, I feel really honored to be a part of the uh, shuttle program and the legacy that the shuttle's brought. And I, 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 we all hate to see it go, but uh, as programs age and uh, as vehicles age, uh, it, it comes time to say, uh, say goodbye to those and uh, look forward to others. And uh, it's time to celebrate the, all of the uh, accomplishments that the shuttle program has brought over the last 29 years. With that in mind, Captain, where do you think you'll be a year from now? I think I'll be back in Houston uh, with my hand up in line for another space flight. Oh, hello. This is Nell Greenfield Boyce with National Public Radio. This is for the American residents of the station. Do you feel there's any need for more crew emergency escape spacecraft on station when the shuttle is not docked? Actually, we have uh, quite a bit of confidence in the uh, the Soyuz that brought us here, and um, there is enough room in each Soyuz uh, to bring us home in case of an emergency. So I think the one uh, thing that we'll miss the most about the shuttle is, um, of course, the, the magnificent vehicle that it is, but the uh, payload power that it has to bring up necessary supplies and spares, and that will be one of the most um, crucial things that we'll miss um, with having only Soyuz um, vehicles attached. But as far as uh, the, our safety goes and, and um, our confidence in needing to evacuate um, in case of an emergency, I think all of us here and those on the ground uh, feel very confident with the vehicles that we do have. Discovery ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes questions from NASA headquarters. Please stand by for a voice check from Moscow PAO. Discovery ISS, <clears throat> this is PAO Moscow. How do you hear me? And we're really loud and clear, Moscow. Hello to you all. This is Stacy Bivens with Russia Today. I'm wondering, how does it feel emotionally to be in space, living in zero gravity, and seeing the world in a perspective that most of us will never get to see? Now, TJ, this is your first mission. Are you mesmerized when you look out and see the Earth? And Olag and Sayuchi, this is your second mission. How does it compare to your first? The first thing I can share with you is that living in space is a, is a wonderful experience. As a kid, you sometimes dream about flying and floating and all that kind of stuff. We're actually living that experience now. You've asked a, a, a very insightful question about looking out and seeing the world. Um, it is breathtaking. Uh, the cupola windows provide you a vista that absolutely stops what you're doing sometimes. I was working out on the, in, on the weightlifting device that we use, and while I was doing that, looking through the window, and we passed over Chicago in a skyless, uh, cloudless night, and it was so stunning, I had to stop and just go take a look. It is spectacular. Okay, and also, Tracy, I understand that one of your hobbies is singing. How does being in space affect your vocal range? Would it be possible for us to get a la-la-la from you? 
<laughs> oh, no chance of that. Um, <laughs> my uh, um, one of my singing buddies is actually here with me in the front row, and um, when all the cameras are turned off and uh, we get a, a moment of uh, off duty, uh, she and I plan to uh, crank up the tunes and do a little uh, singing for our uh, Max Q buddies back home. But um, there really hasn't been a whole lot of opportunity to do much singing up here since uh, I got here. It's been um, uh, full of adaptation and getting prepared for this crew to arrive. Hello, Yekaterina Reshkina, Korolev, uh, uh, City Television. The question to Alikadov, you have received new crew members on board, and did it change the uh, process of work and life on board of the ISS? It's a very interesting question. Our schedule and procedures uh, do change with the shuttle arrival because we have changed the work and rest schedule, uh, shifting it to accommodate shuttle. We are also participating in shuttle activities, helping accomplish their tasks. We're working as one crew. It's quite intense, and we're glad to have the opportunity to have uh, this afternoon off. We're going to spend it uh, showing off the station to our guests. Thank you for the question. I would like to ask the second question to the entire Russian crew. Are you going to test uh, interplanetary uh, technology? on board of the ISS during this mission. I hope there will be tests, but I don't think it will happen during our mission, but I would like to see it start someday because it is a very interesting. The ISS is a unique technological test base for future space exploration by the humankind. Good afternoon. This is Palit Ru, Internet Portal. Question to Ali Kotov. Um, how often uh, do the crew members Members get together and where? We have an informal gathering point. We gather in node one module. A large uh, lunch table is located in that module, and it is a very good tradition for us to welcome our guests around this table. Everybody has, a, has enough space to fit in. But otherwise, we run into each other somewhere in the station. We um, float into a shuttle discovery. Uh, they're always glad to see us there, and we don't see any borders between the U.S. and Russian segment. This is one station. We live there. Uh, this is Stacey Bivens again with Russia Today. Um, Oleg and Soichi, this is your second mission. How does it compare to your first? Yes, uh, you're right. This is my second mission. First one was on the shuttle, and uh, the shuttle mission is really uh, every day is a new day and very exciting. Uh, was versus the station is very controlled, slow pace. I really enjoy both, and obviously the those guys, uh, Discovery crew, uh, brought me a good memory. So I really enjoying the time with those uh, shuttle crews. Discovery ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes questions from Mission Control Moscow. Please stand by for a voice check from JSC PAO. Discovery ISS, this is JSC PAO, back with you here in Houston, ready for the JAXA portion of the event. How do you hear me? Really loud and clear. Hi, uh, I have a question to Ms. Yamazaki. Before uh, becoming an astronaut, um, you got involved in the Kibo development yourself. What was your thought about looking at it in the space? What did you think when you walked into it? Hi. 
そして、この企業を見れることができて本当にありがとうございます。NHK のオバラと申します。about the last Japanese shuttle mission. Well, maybe for the first question, I'd like the, the commander to, you know, evaluate my work in space. But, uh, so far, I think it goes well. And uh, thanks to the, all the team and all the teamwork on the shuttle and the boats on the station, uh, the works are going well on time. Today we finished all the MPLM supply and return items. It's a great celebration and three EVAs and you know, it's a great work. And repeat in Japanese. And Yes, thanks to the teamwork, the job is going very smoothly and uh, we are supporting together and the, uh, we are getting the support from the us too. So our mission is uh, going through in advance. So if I score myself, uh, we are doing 100%. I, I will give 100%. And as a Japanese, this will be the the last shuttle mission and the past experience is the base for this mission, I think. So um, even though this is the last shuttle mission, we would like to take advantage of experience in the ISS operation and the future uh, space exploration. My name is Arai from the Nihon Keizai Shimbun. Uh, it has been 11 years since you get involved in this uh, training. And what did you think at the moment, the be very moment when the shuttle got launched after 11 years of harsh training? Yes, you are right. It has been 11 years of harsh training, and we experienced a lot of a um, uh, lot of things. And uh, the mission training has been for one year. So when the shuttle got launched. I really realized that uh, I am going to the space and it was really moving and touching moment. Uh, when I got into space, space shuttle, the uh, scenery is the same as mock-up and then uh, I thought that this is the same as the mock-up but uh, uh, the next uh, instance I got the um, uh, I got the movement. My name is Kikuchi from the Kyodo News Agency. Uh, yesterday, uh, no, the day before yesterday, uh, you had uh, communication with uh, Minister Maihara and uh, other um, children. And you expressed the haiku and the earth flower are the children of the universe. And I heard that you were um, looking up the sky and the space uh, since your childhood. After you came to the space, were there any change in your view of nature, life, and the way of thinking in general? Yes, uh, when I was elementary school, um, I heard that the element um, consisting the, the earth or the, uh, the universe and ourselves are the same. So it was a touching moment too. And when I came to the universe, I really realized that um, we are actually the part of the universe. Um, I do 
not know how to express the view of the nature and the life, but the, um, the earth from the space was so touching and beautiful and spectacular. And I also thought that the ability or, or the potential of the human power is um, Sparp, uh, it it ha, um, it involved 10,000 or more people got involved in this exploration. The teamwork was uh, beautiful. My name is Yoshida of Yomiuri Shimbun. Yamazaki-san, as an astronaut, wife and mother, you are admired and supported by a lot of working mothers supporting the, their families. Could you give them some message to them? And also, uh, you express the gratitude to your family and other people surrounding you, uh, which is not common in the Japanese culture. It is hard for us to say something even if we thank them. Please give us some advice regarding this mother, too. Thank you very much for your question. Um, there is um, uh, no gender difference um, in the space, and I am uh, so happy that uh, um, this kind of um, universe is uh, ex ex uh, expanded. Uh, when Dr. Mukai came to the space, I was uh, very inspired. So um, it has been 11 years for me to come to the space and so please do not rush when the time comes um, uh, anybody can come too and um, it was not only my my capability but uh, my family husband children uh, and other people supported me and it is hard for me to say thank you uh, but uh, I do not want to forget about the gratitude towards the family and other people surrounding me my name is Okuno from Mainichi Shimbun, and this question is uh, Ms. Yamazaki and Mr. Noguchi, too. Uh, this is a question about ISS. The value of keeping the ISS uh, space station is discussed in Japan as well as in other countries. And could both of you express the meaning and the value of it as a human being actually lived in a, a, and executed the mission on the ISS? Both of you. Well, the International Space Station, after I lived for a while, is that um, we, I felt that the cooperation and the uh, peacefulness uh, of the world cooperation is sparp, and uh, we have to communicate that one to other people, too. And in the science uh, field, as well as the culture field, can be expanded having ISS. So international cooperation and the presence of Japan can be expressed through ISS, I think. What do you think, Ms. Yamazaki? Yes, the ISS is the miniature uh, us, I think. Um, international cooperation is there, and uh, resources. Uh, we are sharing the resources over here. The essence of the uh, resource of the of the earth is here. So we are recycling water and air, and also we are doing a lot of activities over here. So um, uh, those experience can be taken advantage of the activities of the of the earth too. My name is Obara from NHK, and it has been 11 years since you were adopted, and uh, was it worth waiting for these 11 years? And um, since there are four women over there in the uh, up in the space, did you do anything special for them? I think that even if it uh, takes so many years, um, it is worth coming over here. The sunset and sunrise is so beautiful. The atmosphere uh, grows like a rainbow color, and it is so beautiful. Um, four, four of us, we are taking uh, pictures together. 
Uh, my name is Kikuchi from Kyodo Tsushin. Uh, this question is Mr. Noguchi. And this is the first time two Japanese are in the space. When you welcomed Ms. Yamazaki for the first time, what was your impression or what did you think uh, about her? And uh, uh, do you communicate in, in Japanese language when you are off, off duty? I was so happy to tell you the truth because uh, one of my colleagues came to the space, so I was nostalgic and I was really happy to see her um, in the off duty time and, um, and on duty time too. The uh, loading and reloading um, activity was done together, so we were communicating in Japanese language, so I talked a lot of Japanese this time. My name is Yoshida of Yomiuri Shimbun, and this is a question to Ms. Yamazaki. The, uh, uh, your duty was Lord Master, and uh, you manipulated also the robo robotic arms, and uh, if you are going to come back to the space again, what type of job would you like to engage? Yes, I enjoyed um, all the missions this time, the robotic uh, manipulation and the Lord Master's job too, and the payload activities, everything was so enjoyable. So the next time I come back in the same thing, um, I can enjoy them too. And, uh, if I can stay for a long time, maybe I can involved in the experiment too. And this is the last question to Ms. Yamazaki. Uh, this is the last Japanese shuttle mission. And uh, what would you like to communicate to the Japanese people and what would you like to bring back from the space to the Earth? Thank you very much for your question. Uh, let me see. The, this might be the last Japanese shuttle mission, but the space exploration does not end. So uh, we have uh, um, infinite potential in the space, and there are a lot of te technological development ex ex um, expected. So in the Kibo uh, and all the operation uh, of the ISS can be brought back to the Earth and then um, taken advantage of to the uh, future space exploration and space development. Thank you. Discovery ISS, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. And thank you, media at JSC, KSC, NASA headquarters, Moscow, and Japanese media at JSC. Discovery and ISS, we are now resuming operational audio comms.